Hi friends, welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. And if you are new here, I love to take secondhand finds and make them over. And I love to share the process with you all of what I do to these items to give them a new life. So in today's video, I am doing some trash your treasures. I'm taking some unwanted items and repurposing them and making them into something new. Well, a couple of the items here are ones that I've already rehabbed, I've already made over, but I've just ran across the terracotta pots and I never really loved the blackness of this. If I didn't love it, I'm going to go ahead and finish it up and make it over until I do. And so my vision, when I made this over the first time, I didn't know about Dixie Bell's <laughs> patina paint. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be adding some of the iron paint to this just, just really black. I aged that bottom with... Um, candle wax and paint and I loved it but I just didn't like how new looking the top looked so you know that was one of those items that I put up for auction and I'm like you know what I'm not selling this because I don't love it so I guess you always know when I don't completely love something if I'm not willing to put it up for auction or sell it <laughs> so here I am just dabbing on here and there where rust would um be created on this metal piece so after I got it all on I'm not even letting it dry. I'm just going in with my green spray patina. Now, the green spray will make that red, ready brown rust color. And if you want to move on to the blue, which is another patina spray, and that'll give you that turquoise green color. So I'm actually going to layer the two on this because I want to almost make it look like rusty and then, you know, that mossy kind of what the greenhouse goes. So it will match the bottom of this so much better. Now that I've aged the terrarium part of it, that's what I'm going to call it, I need to age these terracotta pots. The thing that I attracted me to these is I love terracotta. But they almost look handmade. They just have that handcrafted look and they don't have a hole. So they are perfect for some fake flowers. And I'm going to try to match them up to this one terracotta pot that I actually picked up at an estate sale that already has that amazing patina. Y'all, I sell terracotta pots all day long in our booths um, that are aged like this. As long as they're not cracked or terribly chipped, they will sell. So the first off, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start off with some Victorian lace by Fusion. And I'm just going to try to dab it on around that lip area. See, I used a very well-loved brush that had flared out bristles, and now I just want to do a tapping motion. I don't want that to be just taps of paint. I want them to kind of fade in and out. Now, I chose to use a piece of drop cloth, and unfortunately, it was leaving little squares, little textures, so I did end up stop using that. Just every piece of drop cloth seems to be different, and this one just had texture that it was leaving behind. But I'm just trying to make it look like where the water... Um, would have calcified, would have, you know, changed that color. So first off, we're just starting off with it white. And we're just blending it in. I switched over to just a Clorox wipe. I want to wipe some of that white paint off. I want to blend it down. I'm trying to get rid of those squares that the drop cloth left behind. Hey, you know, it's a craft. <laughs> Something always happens that's not perfect. So, yep, that in that perfectly imperfect of flipping thrifted vines. So yes, I'm just trying to blend it up. I don't want it to look like it's just one solid paint line that I'm trying to make a round circle. I'm just trying to make it that irregular look. Now I need to make some algae looking. <laughs> so I'm using a Fusions Fern Paint and then I'm just using a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree store and just a little bit of paint on the bristles just to start adding some green and then blending it Why my paint's still wet, but it's terracotta, so it soaks in really fast. That's just a porous surface, but with a Clorox wipe, it'll re-moisten it. Mm -hmm. 
And my last step is to add some dirt. I'm liking how it's looking, but my white is too white. I don't have enough variation in the green. So I'm just using antiquing wax. The nice thing about the antiquing wax is, you know, it's a wax, so it's not going to go on like brown paint that I have to try to fade in again. So it should grab onto the other paint and kind of give it that dirty look. I'm even surprised how well those turned out. Oh, wow. So now I'm going to be doing some flake flowers. Like I said, it doesn't have a hole. So I just stuffed them with some Dollar Tree floral foam. And now I have this crinkle grass that I thrifted. I think you can buy some at the dollar store. You can make it yourself. But I'm just hiding that green floral foam. Fill my pots, I'm going to be using a Walmart's lavender. Now I have three different years here that I'm still working on. So, and actually the middle one may be a Hobby Lobby. I'm not really positive where I got that one. Maybe it was Walmart, but I still have two huge containers full of this. So I need to work it, but I love the variation of the purples. I love that this one has those little open flowers and that the greens all play on each other. So what I'm doing first is I just like to cut it off the stems so that way I can place it in my floral foam and really get my arrangements full. I want to be able to use as much of the stem and fill it out as full as I can. So as you saw, I took one stem apart, pulled one of the off of it, and then I cut a piece of the wire off of that that I will reattach to that other stem that I pulled off. That way it will stick into the floral foam. That's just another way to get a lot out of one stem when you buy it. I get my one centered, then I'll go off to either side and then front and back. That just way you kind of keep uh, all the variations going and then I'll fill in with the next one and the, then from there. It's just a way of working around getting the most out of each individual stem that you buy and making your pots nice and full. Over the years, I have used a million different combinations of trying to make that rust. And by far, Dixie Belle is the most realistic I have ever used and achieved. So even with the added turquoise, I absolutely love it. So now I'm just sealing that in with some Weather Defense Metal Spray. And then we'll get this put back together. So recently I've been doing a lot of cheese boxes. It's just funny how you find one thing and then you keep finding it over and over again. But I found this one and this one is a newer one. So I thought I would share with you how I would age it to look like the older ones that I have been making over. Of course, we're gonna take off the sticker and then we're gonna to have to sand off that um, just with some 220 sandpaper. It's not, it's just stamped on there so it should come off pretty easily. Now I need to give this very new container some age. So to do that, I'm going to be using my watered down antiquing wax mixture. And I'll try to remember to link my formula that I use down in the description, which is antiquing wax, a quarter cup, a spoonful of the Waverly black ink chalk paint, and then the rest is just water. And I use like the medium size pickle jar. And and I just always kind of shake and stir before I use these. So mine has more of a ashy black look than that warm red that the antiquing wax sometimes would get. So 
Yep, all I'm doing is brushing it on. This cheese box is very dry, so it soaks it right in. And I really didn't even have to wipe off the excess. <laughs> it just soaked right in. So now I want to give it a little bit more color. Yes, yeah, so you could leave it as is if that's the look you're going for, but I have a different idea for this box. So I'm going to be using Fusion's Cashmere Color, and I did not let that box dry completely. I want it to have that aged look, and so watering down the paint with because it has that wet antiquing wax mixture underneath will give the look that I'm going for. So I'm just going to go ahead and do one coat. For me, this is exactly how I wanted to look kind of like a whitewash type of look, but not with stark white and antiquing it gave it that little pop that it needed. So now we, of course, we're going to be doing some decoupage paper. And I have this bunny that I think this was a print and um, like copy and paste print where I took the image and just put it into my Excel program. I had done some decoupage earlier and this was one of the leftover images that I did not do, but I love that Jumpin' Bunny, especially after using the IOD molds of the Jumpin' Bunnies. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm still in the bunny, bunny theme, but this image is a little too big, and so I'll have to cut it down, but I like just, I, I like how these colors are all playing with each other. What I'm doing is I'm just taking my fingernail and making a crease. I don't want it to go over the lid and on that lip on the bottom, I that's just the space that I want to do. So I'll go ahead and now I'll cut it off um, of just the section that I'm going to be using. Using some Mod Podge, I'm going to put it on a piece of copier paper. So I'm putting the Mod Podge on the back of the image and then the copier paper. It really bulks up and really feels like a real label when I do this want to leave a little lip of that copier paper because on my next step I need some dry paper. So as I'm cutting out this image, I'm just leaving a little bit like an eighth of an inch around the edge, just a little bitty frame. Don't want it to look like a new label. I'm going to go ahead and Yep, set it on fire. So the nice thing about leaving that little bit of edge is that paper is dry, but the Mod Podge is still wet on the image. And so it just really burns just that paper and just touches that outer edge of the paper. So I have a little bucket, a little bowl of water and a rag to extinguish my flame and control where I'm burning. I want to make sure that my edges are staying down so I just have that rag with a little bit of water and I'm just pushing down the edges, especially since I burnt that. It kind of dried out the Mod Podge a little bit. I mean, I put Mod Podge on the back, but just to make sure that it's staying on. My paper in, I'm just using a little bit of the Howard's Citrus Wax just to protect that paper so that in case it gets any water on it, it is nice and sealed in. to tell you I cannot stop looking for tins to put paper on this is so stinking cute when it has those handles and it's 
way worse for wear. It's really rusty, crusty. So it would make a nice decor piece, something probably not non-food to keep inside of it. But I fell in love with the name of this paint. Little lamb, is that not too cute? So I'm actually going to touch this up and just give it a fresh coat of paint with the little lamb. So I'm just going to try to gingerly without taping off go go around here it's that perfectly imperfect it's not such a bright color that it'll be noticeable but um yeah i'll just take my time with a fan brush actually the brush was a little bit too big so i switched over to a smaller brush with a little bit more control So I only needed to do one coat of paint. I didn't want it to be completely covered. And now I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper and give it a little bit more age. That rusty crustiness underneath is going to pop through. That's what I wanted it to look. I want when I put some uh, decoupage paper on it, I want it to be a little bit more noticeable. And that little lamb color is perfect for that. So yes, I'm just scraping some of the paint off to make it look like it has a little bit more age. Not heavy handed, just very light. Here's the image I'm going to use, this beautiful gray hair. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's cute on Bunny Rabbit, but anyway, it's still cute. I any on anyone but anyway i'm just going to go ahead and cut the image out these are some etsy um that i paid for that i downloaded onto my cute computer so anytime i want to use them i just copy and, and it open it up in my pages and then i just size it to which item i'm using i'll be repeating what i did the last time by putting mod podge on the back of it attaching it to copier paper when I cut it out from the copier paper leaving that one like the little bit of a lip of a frame so when I go to burn those edges to give it that aged look it um, has something to burn and just touches those tips. <music> Sometimes you get a lot of burnt pieces so all I'm doing is taking a dry towel and just wiping them off before I put the glue because sometimes it can make a little bit of a mess. Um, I let this one burn a little bit longer here and there. I just wanted it to have um, a little bit more detail. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Yes, sometimes I have things that are laying around the shop that I did make over, but I didn't love or didn't like how it came together. And you kind of, do you all do that? Do you rework it? Um, now I love the lavender. I love making that metal, that rusty crusty, and just those tins, tins, cheese boxes. Now, since I've made them over, I just can't stop 
wanting to keep making them over. So I hope I have inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way. So give me a quick comment down below if I have. So thanks again for watching today's video. And as always, give me a quick comment. What are the items that I made over today were your favorites? So thank you for being part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. And you can see what we're up to. Bye.